You can listen to The Professional Left wherever you get your podcasts on Netroots Radio or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for June 18th, 2021. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where we wish one and all a happy Juneteenth. It's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. And and Juneteenth, Drift Glass, you know, is a d- in direct competition with right. Independence Day. You, you can't celebrate them both. It's just, that's the <laughs> law. You have to pick one. You can only pick one. You can pick Christmas or New Year's. That's it. Uh-huh. Uh, sorry, but those are the, that's the law. I just don't think it should be a culture war thing. You're, you're celebrating a day when slavery officially ended in every state in the Union. Okay, see, now we have to stop, pause for a minute while I make a list of all the things that shouldn't be part of the culture war thing <laughs> that are because <laughs> assholes decided they needed a, a bumper sticker to make the stupids mad. Yeah. So, yeah, you, no, you're right, of course. But that is, you know, welcome to Illinois where we celebrate Casimir Pulaski Day. We okay. do. Pulaski Day Pulaski for the Day. Polish people. For the good Polish folks and our allies during the Revolutionary War who fought on our side, et cetera. That's a state holiday. Yeah, it is. I also got to give props to Pritzker because yeah. he declared Juneteenth a state holiday on Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then he tweeted, I think this morning, uh, we can, something to the effect of we congratulate the federal government for following Illinois yeah. Yeah. by a day. He's... <laughs> He's one inch, one inch away from kneel before Zod, <laughs> you know, in a, in a kind of liberal fuck you way because. He but oh my care. god, the trolls on his Twitter! Hey, you know, wh- so you know, what? They got nothing better. We're, I'm a state retiree, so I spend my day bitching at the governor. Right. <laughs> I take my pension from the state. I hop in my little hover round that Medicare provides me. I go to the state park and I bitch about government spending. <laughs> Yeah, it's so true. It is true. It, you know, it, I live in a town full of retired state we know, employees. We know people yes, who do who that. Hate the government. Who hate, who hate the, government. the government and worked for the government for thirty five years. Yeah, yes. and hated every minute of it. You know, yeah. and maybe yeah. that's why they're assholes now. Yeah, because maybe they maybe. worked at a job they clearly hated for people. Well, you know, the Republicans ran the state for a big chunk of that time. So. But it was it, they, they in their did it brain for the money and the yeah. benefits because they're really good. Yeah, they really are. But in their brain, which is the you know, which is the point of having a union, you have yes, good benefits right. and good salary, and that's why you have unions. And the but the whole idea was that they can in their brain they can separate the career I had in government from government is bad and the people who do government are evil. They can do that, which is why they're always. It's always confusing to people with an integrated worldview of you know how the world works to find people that can believe two diametrically opposed things at the same time, and they're all watching Fox, which right. of course they are because that's how that brain is wired. Well, it just reminds me of um, that Gary Cooper movie where the two maiden ants are always talking about everybody's pixelated. Oh, pixelated, but us. yeah. Is it? It's um not Meet John Doe. No, it's not Meet John Doe. It's it's. Mr. Deeds, I think. Mr. Deeds, yes, Mr. Deeds. Mr. Deeds. Mr. Deeds and goes to town or something. But yeah, yeah. Mr. Deeds, everyone's pixelated. Except for us. Except for us. And, and I have talked to those state employees who feel that the department they worked on was just 100% corrupt and nobody did their job all day long except for except, me. Except them. A lot of people, like me, think that those people are assholes and we do talk <laughs> about them in using pretty salty language. It'll get you kicked off Twitter um, behind their back. And not very far behind their back. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I'm I'm willing to talk with an earshot, uh, except at venues where it's inappropriate. Like we don't we don't do this in church, where my mm-hmm. wife is going to be liturgist this Sunday. Yes, I am. I'm going to be reading. Actually, I got the liturgy today. I'm gonna I'm gonna be reading the story of David and Goliath. Oh, really? And I'm I, really gonna put my back into it. I yeah. want you to know. Look. <laughs> I'm just rooting. I'm I'm rooting for that Goliath man because those nope. little guys, nope. they're, they're quick. They're quick and they're 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 sneaky. And so I gotta say, I'm putting all the money. It's on It's not going to turn out well for Goliath. No, 
No? Not the way I read it. Oh, crap. <laughs> yeah, the way you read it is it, it, there's a certain kind of, well. Yeah, you can I, tell. I get into it. It's going to mm-hmm. be good. It's anyway, going to be good. Yeah, people. It's, it's going to be good. Drift Glass, I'm going to start our podcast. You're not going to believe this, but I'm going to start it by um, thanking not, Tucker Carlson. Have, oh, A, that's amazing and you frightened me. And B, uh, we haven't started already because that was no, all well, I had. No, we started six minutes ago, but I, actually I, I'm just starting to read our actual notes. Okay. I spent all, that all was of just banter. I spent you all know. of my energy. It's gone. I have nothing <laughs> left for the podcast. So sorry about that. I, you should write banter, banter, banter in there. Yeah. Drift class running off at the mouth. Six oh, minutes. Should yeah. I start by thanking the listener who sent me a piece of computer yes, equipment? Yes, you should. That was awfully kind and, and yep, timely. Somebody sent me a piece of computer equipment that um, I didn't know I needed until I got one. <laughs> and then I needed it. And I'm like, oh, this really is great. So mm-hmm. I just wanted to thank the listener who sent me that piece of a computer equipment. And then I went, oh, wow. This makes my life so much easier. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. So, that's all I'm going to say about that. But uh, it was very sweet of them. And I deeply, deeply appreciate it. Um, and uh, yeah, I want to thank Tucker Carlson so much. He did, yeah. a, he did a great favor to those pursuing truth by telling the most absurd lie of the week. Uh-huh. That somehow the FBI was... FBI agents are the unindicted co-conspirators in certain legal documents. Yes, they're re- they're behind the Antifa the, riot in Washington. The Antifa riot that was uh, yeah. tourists. Yeah, and not half at anti- all Trump supporters. No. Right, half half tourists who were just there to take pictures, and half conveniently located uh, next FBI to a bunch agents. of BLM and Antifa <laughs> who kicked the door open so the tourists could go in and take pictures right. of all the pretty stuff. Right. Well, yeah. at any rate, you know. Tucker Carlson did this on Wednesday, and it led to um, the legal analysts for the major cable news networks that are not Fox Uh to get on their hind end and say, oh, no, that's not true. That's not legal. Tucker Carlson knows that. And several pointing out that Tucker Carlson is actually just repeating Russian disinformation campaigns. You know, that's what he's doing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But the... Erasure of Trump supporters slash Republicans mm-hmm. from the term January 6th insurrection. Right. As if it's just some people did something on a date. And the important thing is January 6th. Right. It's just a regular insurrection. insurrection. It's just not a regular. Republicans, right? It's a run of the mill insurrection, the kind you see all the time. Right. Not, not a specific or, person. Or it could be a totally unique insurrection, but we're not going to talk about who did it. Right. We're just going to call it the January 6th yeah. insurrection, Freaking which it. erases the culprits. Right. That term erases the culprits. So if you're going to call at Crooks and Liars, we call it the MAGA sedition riot, uh, which is much more accurate. You can also just call it one day in the life of the Republican Party because yeah. they're all trying to find a way to make it go away or make it watered down or make it not a really bad thing. <clears throat> and it turns out now that the Justice Department is releasing video. They released a 56-second video that was used in a trial of one of the uh, rioters who was a retired police officer using a flagpole to beat up a cop. And there are body cam there's this body cam video that's yep. very violent mm-hmm. that is not touristy and is clearly not an fbi agent and uh as the legal analysts on on cnn and msnbc said you know it's it's not possible for a prosecutor to call an fbi agent who is working undercover <laughs> an unindicted co-conspirator well, that doesn't sure. happen if you're going to split hairs about law and stuff like yeah, that, yeah. then, you know, you can prove anything. I mean, you yeah. know. <laughs> in other words, you want you want to work as a judicial watch lawyer is what you're doing. Oh, to absolutely. Do. You kidding me? All I have to do is sit <laughs> in an office throwing poop at a, a big map on the wall of buzzwords. <laughs> yes. Right. And whatever, whenever I get three across, that's the story. That's the story. Wait and Ad filed a lawsuit. And that right. brings the stupid people with their money. And that's where I am with Republicans right now is yeah. you're you are automatically if you are a boots on the ground Republican, you're a chump. Yeah. Well, and or, they are looking what I mean by they is the Trump level, uh, Donald Trump level of politician is looking for an easy mark 
to separate you from your money. Yeah. And uh, they'll do it. And and there's there's really no bigger chump out there than Mike Lindell, who is being milked by yep. Steve Bannon. I mean, that's what's happening. Hal Sparks had a wonderful uh, segment on that. This friend of week. the pod? Friend of the pod, Hal Sparks? Friend of the friend of the pod, Hal Sparks. Mm-hmm. Um, or I'd like to be a friend of his pod. He's he's doing a great work. And um, yeah, Steve Bannon is just holding out as long as <laughs> I guess Mike Lindell's brainstem doesn't explode yeah to to milk him for his money yeah and yeah, he's... buy ads i will you know buy ads on my podcast network whatever channel i'm on mm-hmm. and i'll take your money and he's i'll the... call you a great american yep and, I, and he will as long as this you know drunken hick is in the bar um yeah. steve bannon will call him a genius as long as he's buying the drinks and right. as long as he's losing to Steve Bannon at poker and right. and and he's draining him of his money. Uh, that's fine. And then he's a once great his, American. Sure. Yep. And then once that husk is squeezed completely dry, mm-hmm. Mike Lindell, who because there'll, there'll always be another one. Oh there'll yeah, always yeah. be another. There'll always be another one waiting in line to tell the morons, to tell the meatbags the lie they want to believe. And that's why Marxism is back, baby. Oh no. Yeah, Marxism has made its triumphant return. Uh, to our shores, uh, because um, the the problem with the people we're talking about, the stupids or the great wad or Republicans <laughs> or whatever you want to call them, whatever pejorative you choose to describe them, they're all accurate. Um, although I, we were lectured last week on a certain uh, Never Trump podcast not to be condescending. <laughs> ever. Oh, drip Conde- last. Condescending. And, and you were con- also asked on Twitter how long you'll hold a grudge. Yeah. How long you got? <laughs> <laughs> How long you got, baby? I'm still holding grudges from fourth grade. So, um, and because you know that's my nature. But it, yeah, this this as a brief aside, this never Trump, this very notable never Trump podcast was excoriating the left uh, because uh, contempt and condescension are just poison to our to American politics. Uh-huh. And I just go, you know, it's hilarious coming from someone who very comfortably fit inside the oeuvre of conservative media for 27 years. Yeah. Um, and the definition of conservative media was having contempt and a condescension towards people like me. Mm-hmm. And I wrote a whole post about it. I said, here's the, here are the best sellers and they're liberals are traitors. Liberals are liars. Liberals are scum. Never believe a liberal. Liberals are hate America. And it, and that is the conservative movement. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you, it has some, some, uh, some fake concern about deficits wrapped around it. But the whole, the core of the conservative movement has been unremitting contempt and hatred for you and me. All you have to do is go to Google News and search for, quote, Newt Gingrich blames, unquote. Oh, yeah. His entire career for 20 years has been blame Democrats anytime anything bad happens anywhere in the universe. Well, and and to sum this up sort of in, in a short way, part of the reason that it it itches me the wrong way Mm-hmm. Uh, is that for literally for decades, people on the right have been putting roofs over their head and feeding their kids and buying boats and sending their kids to college by doing nothing more than shitting on people like us. Nothing, right. nothing more. That is all they've been fucking doing, all of it. And during all that time, most of our never Trump friends were helping helping them load the guns and fire the guns. They loved the they were make they were making that kind of money themselves. Mm-hmm. And then when the the guns got turned on them. Mm-hmm. suddenly that's the worst thing that ever happened to anyone. Now, you know what? I'm sorry that these people lost their their one media job and had to get another media job immediately after on MSNBC <laughs> or CNN because that is the worst thing that can happen to someone yes, who's gotten right. used to luxury. They've gotten used to the microphone. They've gotten used to being paid for their stupid fucking opinions. And that is, uh, that is a bit of a heartbreak. But the idea that they're that clueless, that they don't understand that th- those of us on the left have been enduring that constant, hellfire from the right for our entire adult life mm-hmm. and that all of you not assholes, to mention not to wh- mention dear class mm-hmm. what black people have had to deal oh. with for for centuries for centuries what yeah. gay people trans people have had to deal with for centuries absolutely yep you no know doubt the, about it we white liberals are not the the mo- biggest victims on the planet no 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 <laughs> and and but we never would claim we are Right, and we would right. never pretend that the the suffering of those who've had it much worse than us doesn't exist. Right, and didn't right. pre-exist us by quite a considerable <laughs> stretch of time. 
unlike these people who all believe that the greatest thing, the worst thing that ever happened to any conservative is they get treated like every liberal has been treated for 30 years and not recognize that, that they were part of the problem and not, not showing us any respect. You know, it gets really down to that for me. They demand respect from everyone else. They demand to be the geniuses who saw Trump coming in 2016 and tried to warn everyone. And they turn around and shit on everyone else who said, but but all of that, all of it was a pre-existing condition in your party that you profited from. Why can't you just admit that you got it wrong and there were people out there who didn't? What is so painful about that? And they can't do it. So they built this entire machine made of stupid, angry, racist people to get to win elections that's powered by like nine buzzwords. And mm-hmm. that's why Marxism has returned. And I am reminded of the story because calling liberals Marxist is suddenly, you know, everywhere. I did a post about this. It's Josh Hawley and it's Tucker Carlson Marge, and Candace Owens. Marge is big on that with all yeah. of her campaign stuff. Is oh, Mar- about Marco Rubio is there. Yeah. Um, they're, all, they're all doing it. And, and it's, it's all over Fox News and the uh, Heritage of American Whiteness Foundation. I'm sorry, the Heritage Foundation. <laughs> and, and uh, of course, Ron Johnson, who's never seen a racist, you know, bandwagon. He, he didn't jump on. Mm-hmm. But the point being, the stupids can't handle more than like six or seven buzzwords. So they keep recycling them over and over again. And as a veteran of being shit on for decades by the same people in a rotating series of buzzwords that don't mean anything and don't describe us at all, you know, terrorist mm-hmm. loving, America hating, cut and run, all that shit. Mm-hmm. I don't, I, I, it rolls off my back. I don't really care. But what always cracks me up, and I, this, is the, this is a Kathleen Parker story. Oh, Kathleen Parker, reliable conservative hack for a long time. A, 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 a columnist who had a column and still has a column and is always, you know, is Since shit. the beginning of the George W. Bush administration, yeah. at least. Right. Yeah. She's been around and for has a while. Got a, a Pulitzer or two under her belt mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. writes about kitchen table stuff every now and then. But her, her stick, like all of their the respectable conservative columnists, has been shit on the left, extol the right. And, and she just went along with that. And, and her readers loved her and everything was fine. Again, as long as she's on the, the trigger end of the gun, she mm-hmm. never noticed what mm-hmm. it was like to be on the muzzle end of the gun. Right. And right. then one day she wrote a column saying that Sarah Palin really wasn't fit for national office. Mm-hmm. And her next column in her, in her Washington Post op-ed column was, apparently I'm a bitch, I'm a liar, and I'm a C-word, and I'm a monster, and I'm a scum, and da. Ah. And she yeah, just- her email uh, was filled with, what? Traitor, monster, yeah. you bitch, you're lying. And, and they called yeah. her all the names they call us all the time. This mm-hmm. completely un- flipped her out. It did. Because she, she didn't believe these were people in her party. And of course, because, like because right. she was busy loading the cannons and firing at us. Yeah. The yeah. minute the guns get turned around and the same guns start firing at her, that's the end of the world. Yeah. That's the worst thing that could possibly happen. And it was the shock that she had. She never realized the Republican Party was full of Republicans. Mm-hmm. And the fact that she didn't gain one ounce of enlightenment from that. Nope. that she has gone right back to writing hack conservative columns. Yeah, is and not the fact there. that none of these people, because they have a real aristocratic view of the universe. Mm-hmm. They are, they're the best people. Mm-hmm. And, and anything that, that makes them feel bad or, 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 or holds them accountable is an affront to their sense of, of royalty. And they really don't like it. And that's why they block you on Twitter. <laughs> um, but that was my, my big takeaway from this week was, well, of course, Marxism is back because of course it's back. Everything's Marxist now. And by next month, it'll be something, it'll be socialist. Apparently, um, Joe Biden is a Marxist, socialist, liberal, BLM, something, Who something, takes something. his coat off, Driftglass. Yeah. Well, true tragedy. That's tragedy. a crime against humanity to take your coat off on a hot day. Although yeah. George W. Bush, that was like a shtick of his. I'm well, going to take my jacket off and be a, a working man that you can have a beer with. But when um, Joe Biden did it, it was disrespecting the office of the president. Yeah. So, yeah. Was, well, you know. Tell uh, me about David Brooks for sentence, five minutes. A, oh, no, no. A, a sentence <laughs> that I've had to bribe my wife into saying, tell me about David Brooks. <laughs> one, one moment, our David Brooks moment, because he's well, always doing this. Who? Oh, yeah, he is. And I, I'm, I'm not finished with my post today. So a lot, a lot of this might be, I get a lot of my thoughts straight by putting them on paper yeah. and this is half done. But today, Mr. David Brooks has a column in the New York times announcing the American Renaissance is back, baby. <laughs> and I'm not kidding. The, the liter- every three and a half years, this, the American Renaissance has begun. 
And he lists all a bunch of good stuff. You know, workers have rights now and labor has more power and you know, people are this and people are that. All of which is, you know, I don't have an argument with. I have no argument with his citations of the good things. And it was this idea that we've all passed through this great trauma, which is was COVID and, the, and the, the shutting down of the economy. And we all had time to reflect, you know, oh, in, our, yeah. in our large Bethesda Humility, homes right. <laughs> with our large pools and our, our, our you know, our new wives. Uh -huh. um, and we've come to the conclusion that things are pretty fucking awesome. And uh, that, that we're going to have a renewed something, 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 an American Renaissance, whatever. David Brooks, and I, I, I pulled a quote from Robert Heinlein. So I get double drinks for this, right? <laughs> Except it's Robert Heinlein quoting William Lindsay Gresham of Gresham's Law, I believe. Um, and this is from a, an essay that Robert Heinlein wrote in 1980 called The Happy Days Ahead. And the, the pull quote from Bill Gresham was, you never get rich peddling gloom. Oh, yeah. And it's yeah. absolutely true. And he, and he goes yeah. into great depths about how you can tell the Mark anything as long as it's what he wants to hear. And mm -hmm. if you tell him what he wants to hear, he'll come back over and over and over again and forget you ever, that you were ever wrong. And David Brooks has made a 30-year career out of just doing that, of telling wealthy, inbred, shut-in, beltway elites the bullshit they want to believe. And 15 years ago, it was... The Republican Party is going to have a great renaissance and it's come roaring back. It's right around the corner. And since that never happened, um, he kept predicting it over the years, you know, and then he gets sad and he'd get happy again. But the Republican renaissance, very specific Republican Party renaissance was right around the corner. And it had happened in 2014. He said, oh, yeah, the Republican Party's back. It's gotten rid of all that, that scary, strange weirdness that it did, but it's back and it's great. And there's nothing but bright news ahead. A year later, Donald Trump is the effective nominee of the Republican Party. So, and then up until like the first year of the Trump administration, David Brooks was peddling still. The Republican Party is doing okay. It's a, sort of doing fine. Rubio, oh God, Rubio is not going to save us. And then once it was clear that the left was right about the GOP all along, he pivoted to the conservative intellectual renaissance is right around the corner, baby. <laughs> yeah, the Republican Party's fucked. Oh yeah, everyone knows that. That's pretty obvious. But you know what? It's, there's a flowering of conservative intellectual thought that's coming out. And, and that conservative intellectual thought will be led by none other than Jonah Goldberg. Mm -hmm. Yes, Jonah Goldberg shall lead them. A, a doughy pant load shall re, uh, lead them. And he went on and on glowing terms about how both sides are bad. And this, the conservative intellectual field is rich in these people you've never heard of and never will. Uh, but David Brooks was sure it was going to save the right. And then the conservative revolution, the conservative renaissance also never showed up. So David Brooks is now batting zero, zero, zero in mm -hmm. predicting renaissances. He sucks at it. And he does it because he's a liar. He lies to stupid rich people because they want to believe that somehow out there we're going to turn a corner. And so imagine my surprise today when I opened the New York Times, the American renaissance has begun, baby. Mm -hmm. It's, it's mm -hmm. here. And again, all the things he cites as examples are good things. But what he cites at the very beginning is a his, uh, economist talking about how West Germany and Japan endured, the, endured this terrible devastation during World War II, but bounced back really fast, whereas Britain bounced back really slow. So, you know, tremendous trauma like we've been through uh, can lead to an immediate bounce back. And there's so much wrong with that analysis, beginning with, why, why did you choose Britain? Why not America? Because America bounced back really fast from that. But the second thing you learn is that David Brooks, who, who only degree is a history major from the University of Chicago, he has no training in journalism, he has no background, he has no degree in anything like that. Is that but he David knew how Brooks, to make friends with the right people oh yeah, early on Bill in Buckley. Life. Yeah. Sucked up to Bill Buckley and then his career was made. Mm -hmm. The thing that David Brooks fails to notice from the two examples that he cites, West Germany and Japan, is that the reason that they succeeded is that the fascist regimes that ran their country were bombed out of existence. Bombed. And then now, the United States rebuilt them from yes, the ground. Did. So if David Brooks is subtly suggesting that we should bomb the Republican Party out of existence in order to enjoy our fascist regime, in order to enjoy a renaissance, well, you know, maybe I'm down for that. I wouldn't I wouldn't even go that far. I would I would go full AOC on the, on his ass and say, mm -hmm. look, if you want to 
cut the military budget the way we cut Germany and Japan's military budget yes. in 1945. Well, we and then give them massive amounts of aid to rebuild their economy and occupy them. Japan and was occupy occupied. Them. Right. We, we rewrote <laughs> the German Constitution to and we to, said no, no, no. You don't have a two a, a, a Congress like we do. Right. You don't get to. You don't do an, an electoral college. No, and no, there's no. Gonna be, and there's going to be a labor board. Labor yes, will have an actual labor. represented representation at companies at corporations. Yes. But most importantly, the pre uh, the precursor, the precondition for this happening was the elimination of the deeply rooted fascist movement in these two countries. Mm -hmm. David mm -hmm. Brooks doesn't mention in this column the GOP at all. Well, of course they, not. They simply disappeared. So no, 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 no. You have to get the fascists out of the way before you can have a renaissance. And according to Mr. Brooks, no, we don't. We don't even have to think about the Republican Party because, and this isn't because it's true. It's because David Brooks doesn't want anyone asking him any questions about, yeah, but what about the GOP being absolute obstructionist assholes who are right. hell-bent on destroying this country? Right. And you being wrong every fucking day of your fucking adult life about them. How about that? No, no, no. Let's just forget that. Forget all that. I don't that. think I ever wrote anything like that. Zip it. Zip it. I don't want to talk about that. I want to go on PBS and NPR and talk about how uh, the rising tide and labor unions and America's coming back and we're manufacturing stuff now and people are just friendlier to each other, you know, and humility and blah, blah, blah. All of which is fine. But it ignores the fact that to get to the Renaissance, you have to get the fascists out of the way, which his own historical examples would tell him if he bothered to actually read history correctly. But if David Brooks read history correctly, he wouldn't be David Brooks. He'd be... Yeah, but Griff Glass, the, the, the people that always sell this kind of sweet white oatmeal are mm -hmm. mediocre white guys. No, of course they are. Yeah, yeah. No, and, no. I, and and no it takes... <laughs> no, as, as I've said a million times, it takes a mediocre white guy to defeat a mediocre white guy. <laughs> and as a mediocre white guy, this is right in my wheelhouse. So... Well, um, this reminds me a little bit of a story that came out on CNN today. Mm -hmm. Um do you remember when all of a sudden Chris Matthews and some other people in the mainstream media discovered discovered uh -huh. that the Tea Party was made up of former Bush Republicans? Mm. And it was it was a big story that oh it wow, was, it's not a brand new political movement. It's it was it actually, was Joe Scarborough. It was Joe Scarborough, David yes. Brooks. Right. Right. And uh, Chris Matthews, and oh, all yeah. of a sudden, simultaneously noticed that the, the, oh, there was a, a study done. There yeah. was a study done of Tea Party voters, and mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, we've we've discovered that yes. they're actually re registered Republicans since before Bush. Okay. Uh -huh. Well, today CNN has discovered. Wait a minute. That I'm making cyber, my, <laughs> cyber I'm making ninjas. My, I'm making my CSI taking my glasses off in, in a discovery <laughs> moment move. CNN has discovered that cyber ninja, ninjas is one guy. <gasps> So One ninja, white guy. Ninja singular? Yeah. No. Oh my yeah. God. It's Cyber Ninjas is mm -hmm. a website that he set up. Yeah. Yep. And he went and told a uh, Republican state Senate lady <laughs> who's, you know, enthralled to Mango Mussolini exactly what she wanted to hear. And that he could totally audit these in a way that would make it clear that Donald Trump won. Mm hmm. And she, as the head of the Republicans in the state Senate of, of Arizona, Mm -hmm. gave him the keys to the ballots. Bent over, grabbed her ankles, and said, yeah. do whatever you want. Yeah, and yep. Andrea Fed on Twitter said, it's not Cyber Ninjas, it's Doug Logan. <laughs> Press three for sales and get Doug Logan. Press four for HR and get Doug Logan. Mm -hmm. Press five for purchasing, it's Doug Logan. No, you Go to the but... address, and it's a rented mailbox in a UPS store. President D.R. Logan, Vice President <laughs> Don J. Logan. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I, I'm familiar with these. Douglas, Douglas Logan and Douglas J. Logan are two totally different Well, people, and it, right? to be fair, we do exactly the opposite. It's just, people think it's just the two of us. So we have a staff of dozens of people running around here, fact-checking me all the time, oh, yeah. writing up our notes, no. um, making me look Biting pretty. you in the ankle down in the laundry room? Well, That's yeah, there, there is that. That's not staff. <laughs> no, but making me look pretty. I keep telling the staff I'm on a microphone. No one can see me. I don't need to look pretty. But they just say... <laughs> You know what? You feel pretty, so you sound pretty. So, oh, you know, they gosh. know what they're doing. So I get my hair Lord. done the way they want me. But you're right. Um, these people are, when you well, drill down. I just down, said Steve Bannon, eat your heart out. Yeah. Because he's getting rich off the taxpayers of Arizona. Yeah. And and we'll get, and they're going to, they're trying really hard. I predict they'll succeed in exporting this freak show to at least a couple of other states mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to keep it going, man. Because, you know, once, 
Once the tent folds and the circus leaves town, everyone notices that they have nothing left. Their pockets are picked and they, they got nothing out of it. Mm-hmm. And they feel like shit. So you have to keep the party going. Um, and it's getting to be like, I don't remember, I don't remember if you remember uh, Jesse Pinkman from yeah. Breaking Bad. Uh-huh. But he was running that party all day and all night. Yep. And it kept getting more louder and uglier and more violent. And people were like puking in the corner. But the whole, the important thing, keep the party going. Order more pizza. Get people here. And that's what they need to do. That's what they're doing right now. Their their mm-hmm. whole party, literally and figuratively, uh, has to keep this madness whipped up. This is the hot air that keeps the balloon up in the air. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. if it leaks for a minute, if it cools off for a minute, the whole thing falls apart. And the mm-hmm. people who are making money and making ratings and winning office all know it. Right. If, if the if the wing nuts aren't red hot mad crazy all the time, everything falls apart and we all lose our jobs. So we have to keep inventing reasons for them to be furious at imaginary enemies. I want you to talk about this article in Yahoo News that you were talking to me yeah. about. Earlier. Well, this is this is one of those things that I put in here because honestly, um every now and then it does feel like we're shouting into the abyss. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like you realize this problem goes back like 30 fucking years, right? And all I hear echoed back is Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Don't talk about that. Don't you realize these people are our friends now? They're our allies. You shouldn't challenge them on this. And what? who cares if Michael Steele goes on television and lies all the time? What's the harm in that? And the harm in that is, well, the lie keeps going. And we, if we never diagnose history correctly. We will never know what went wrong. We will never fix it properly. We had a problem in our house several years ago of a drip coming through the ceiling in my wife's office. It is directly under a the upstairs bathroom. So clearly, mm-hmm. the upstairs bathroom is the problem. So- we hired the people. They tore out the roof. They went upstairs. I said, no, your upstairs bathroom is fine. There is a hole in your roof directly above the bathroom. It's leaking through and it's pouring into the office. And, and the beam in your roof is actually, the water is following that beam and then following it down to the first floor rather than mm-hmm. dripping in the bathroom because it's an eave. So we, The way, the way your, the, your house is constructed, the water is just following the lowest point and it it's a weird drip. It's a they they admitted it, but they had to cut a hole in my ceiling of my office ceiling. to realize yeah. it's not your toilet at all. It's the roof. So, but, but if you diagnose the Republican Party as yeah. suddenly having gone inexplicably insane in 2016 with no preconditions, there was nothing leading up to it. It was yeah. certainly not. It was certainly not Joe Scarborough's fault or Charlie Sykes's fault or Rick Wilson's fault. None of these people. These people are all fucking blameless. And then suddenly the Republican Party went insane. Then you're going to want to return the GOP. If you're a conservative and if you want right. to stay in the party, if you want to, if you want your party back, you are going to try, along with all of your mainstream media friends, to set the clock back to 2014. Because right. that's when the Republican Party was fine. David Brooks said it was fine. Everything's right. fine now. And my point being, that's ripping a hole in your ceiling to discover that the toilet wasn't the problem. Mm-hmm. The problem is much further than that. The problem goes back to Barry Goldwater. And mm-hmm. If you don't diagnose the fact that the Republican Party has spent decades building a base of hate-filled morons who read Ann Coulter, they do not read The Wealth of Nations, they don't read Democracy in America, they read The Strange Case of Vince Foster. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. the base you built. And so when I read someone who, with a lot more credentials than I will ever have in five lifetimes telling me that I was right... I would like to repeat that out loud <laughs> on a podcast that I happen to be a partner in. Let's not forget the white nationalism in no, no. all of that oh, no, no. history Let's, as well. No, no, no. But, uh, so I her, never want to forget that. And, and this is one of the many reasons why, you know, Steve Gilliard's voice is keenly uh, yeah. missed. Because yeah. he always brought the heat and he always brought a kind of, you know, really muscular prose mm-hmm. backed up by historical knowledge. But it was always the Republican Party is a racist party. First mm-hmm. and foremost, the Republican Party is a racist party. Mm-hmm. If we go back to 1870, things were different. But it's not 1870 now, is it? Now mm-hmm. is today. And today, the Republican Party is a racist party. And so this is a woman named Jackie Calms. She's the White House editor for the Los Angeles Times Washington Bureau. She previously worked for the New York Times. Before that, she was chief political correspondent for the Wall Street Journal for 18 years and began as a journalist in Abilene, Texas in 1978. So she's been doing this a long time. And her her uh, her column is entitled, My Front Row Seat to the Radicalization of the GOP, the Republican Party. And she says it started with the escalator ride, right? In, nah, at yeah. Trump Tower? Yeah, no, she didn't say No? <laughs> uh, she does say the radicalization of the Republican Party has been the biggest story of my career. Man, if every reporter just started there. 
I've been watching it from the start, from the time I arrived in the de then Democratic Texas, just out of college in 1978, to my years as a reporter in Washington through four revolutions, Ronald Reagan's, Newt Gingrich's, the Tea Party's, and Donald Trump's, each of which took the party further right. Hmm. And then she jumps, I jump over a whole bunch of paragraphs. You should read the whole thing. We'll put the link in the uh, in the podcast, on uh, the post. But uh, with George W. Bush's loss, no, I'm sorry, George H. W. Bush's loss to Bill Clinton, Newt Gingrich immediately looked towards 1994. Since the late 1980s, he had mobilized a nationwide network of right-wing talk radio hosts. Hello, Charlie Sykes. Mm -hmm. Emerging in local markets, they echoed his talking points daily. On Election Day 1994, Gingrich was confident of big gains and certain that conservative media had helped. Quote, I think one of the great challenges, uh, changes in the last couple of years was the rise of talk radio, which gives you an alternative validating mechanism, separate from the mainstream media, he told me. In fact, he was about to be interviewed by a new local host, a young guy named Sean Hannity. And the new speaker who'd taken the party to the promised land, uh, Gingrich led a cult of personality that presaged Donald Trump's. Be nasty, he'd tell followers. And he kept conservatives perpetually angry at Democrats and at government generally with the aid of his, wait for it, right-wing media megaphone. On the first day of the new Republican-controlled Congress in January of 19... Uh, I'm sorry, 1995, which is a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Gingrich had set up what he called Radio Row in a Capitol quarter, table after table of talk show hosts interviewing Republicans for conservative audiences back home. Rush Limbaugh, the king of them all, was declared an honorary House member. Collectively, these local celebrities became a power center within the party. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can say that this all began with Barry Goldwater, and I do actually before that. You can talk about Strom Thurmond. You can talk about Nixon's Southern strategy. All of that is true. But it's undeniably factually, historically accurate that 1994, that the Newt Gingrich culmination of cultivating right-wing radio nuts, of hating Democrats, of turning politics into a blood sport, of declaring people like you and I traitors and monsters and liars who love killing children, the culmination of all of that came in the 1994 election with them sweeping to power. At that point, Everyone on the political compass should have stood up and said, wait a minute, wait a minute. This kind of politics cannot be allowed to work. You, th this is not no longer a contest of ideas. One side is fighting about tax policy. The other, the other side is calling the other side traitors. And they're doing it with a giant megaphone that is, that is coast to coast, completely unregulated, and utterly uh, fact averse. Just screaming hate all day and all night long is will destroy our politics. That is when a whole bunch of us came to realize we were in real trouble and became radicalized in our own way about the trajectory of the GOP. It was already bad. It was horrible under Reagan. But under Gingrich and Limbaugh, the modern Republican Party, the Trump Republican Party, the seeds of it were there. The precursor elements were all there. Anybody, you can see TNT, wiring, and clock all together on the table. You knew mm -hmm. what they were building. Yeah. And all of these people who swear on the lives of their children, they had no fucking idea what was going on, even as they were contributing to it mm -hmm. until Trump actually took office, either are just congenital liars, which case you shouldn't trust them, or they really didn't know, in which case they should not be on television or radio passing themselves off as experts. Because the mm -hmm. one thing they were supposed to know shit about, they clearly didn't know shit about. Mm -hmm. But that was it. I just, I, you know, I, I occasionally... As ego as large as mine, as indestructible <laughs> as mine, even no, that. Validation. That was nice. You I need get a little validation. <laughs> no, I, well, I get it from people on on uh, the internet, yeah. and that's nice. In between calling me terrible names, um, I, and and that's that's great. I get it from listeners all the time. But it's mm -hmm. nice to hear oh, yeah. from well oh, outside yeah. my universe that nope, you're not crazy. This is how the Republican Party's been going. I had a front row seat, and. Uh, you can see it coming a mile away. If you didn't see it coming, you didn't want to see it coming, or you were profiting by it. Either way, you shouldn't. You should give up your seat to someone who wasn't profiting from it and did see it coming. Speaking of things that I saw coming, yeah. As you know, Driftless, I spent a lot of years in Alabama. All three yes, of my did. children were born in Alabama. We well, got time off for good behavior, which I I get you know. time off for good behavior from, and I I it gives me a a deep appreciation for those listeners out there who are blue dots in red states. We talk about that a lot um, when we get letters and emails from people that, oh, it's another blue dot writing us. You know, that if you're in a red state and you're there for work or you're there because you have to care for an ailing parent or 
whatever reason you have to live there, um, it can be very, very hard. And lonely. And lonely. Yeah. And we want you to know you're not alone and we're here for you. Yep. Uh, but there was Alabama news that I came across today. Um, I sent a tweet out about it, but I wanted to share it with our listeners, too. Um, Alabama is one of 12 states, mostly in the South, mm-hmm. that have taken no action toward expanding Medicaid eligibility under the Affordable Care Act. And that's, you know, 11 years ago. Yeah. And as most of you have probably heard, uh, the ACA uh, say, survived another <laughs> Supreme Court challenge, the third <laughs> one, uh-huh. uh, because states have no standing to bring uh, claims of harm from the ACA to the Supreme Court anymore. Right. Thank you. Uh, it's not hurting you to have health care for your people. And that's to guarantee thanks- health care will not be turned off because you got extra sick. And the reason they have no standing is because there's no penalty. Is well, that what you want to talk about? Th- no, I, I just want to mention the reason, the very reason that they have no standing is that they themselves stripped out the mandated provision. Yeah, the required- individual mandate. Right, right. right. So Alabama is one of these 12 states that has taken no step to, to expand Medicaid eligibility. Mm-hmm. And now they are flipping over backwards to try to figure out if they are eligible, the state is eligible to spend part of the $2 billion that state received from the American Rescue Plan mm-hmm. on prison construction. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's not just prison construction, of course, Drift Glass. It's private prison construction. Of course. Of course. That they've been working for two years on a plan to lease and operate three t- new men's prisons that private developers would finance, build, maintain, and own. And if they can give the private developers the federal money, they will be able to build three new men's prisons that will then be maintained as private prisons. That the state will be obligated to to provide a certain number of prisoners each year Mm -hmm. or pay for those prisoners. If those, for those empty cells, I mean, this is the deal. This is why people go into the private prison industry. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Now, I don't, I don't know if governor Ivy has gotten the memo that uh, Joe Biden doesn't like private prisons, Mm -hmm. Uh, but she better get a clue because I don't think that's going to be allowed. Well, uh, just, but they're trying to do budget uh, finagling mm-hmm. so that it looks like they lost the revenue for the prisons from COVID. Right. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Because yeah. Yeah, tr- if they can prove that they lost their prison funding because of COVID, mm-hmm. then they can build prisons with the money. And if I can prove that our meth lab just collapsed because <laughs> of COVID, I think I should get meth replacement money. Uh, through the a PPP loan, at least, at the very yeah, least. Yeah, red was... states. Well, that was the other one this week that I think one of our daughters shared on Facebook. I think I think middle child shared on Facebook of the restaurant that had the big sign in front, please be patient with our wait staff. No one wants to come to work because of unemployment benefits. Right. The sign on the door of the yeah. restaurant says this. And then someone, of course, had the wherewithal to go look up whether that restaurant had received PPP loans to pay their people to come in and work. Mm-hmm. And they had. And of course they had. They had gotten a couple Over of them. Over a million dollars. Yeah. yeah. So handouts for me, but not for you. Yeah. Right. Well, that's, that. I, I, I like having that debate. Yeah. You know, well, before the, we do a news roundup, Dirk Glass, um, you had a feel-good story that you wanted to share. I, I did. Well, it's a it's a thing that was uh, I saw on this uh, website called Crooks and Liars. Never heard of it. Don't know if you've ever heard of it. it it's a pretty good website. Um, one of the editors, um, I know personally and I, uh, she's hot, isn't she? She's, she's, she's hot. so hot. She's so hot. <laughs> um, and it's a story of Timothy Harrison who went to work at a waffle house on the day of his high school graduation because he and his family didn't have a ride to the venue, which was an hour away. And his mother who works at daycare center couldn't get the day off anywhere. And his manager at the waffle house jumped into action. Uh, the manager said, go home, get your paperwork, call the school. We'll figure out the rest. And Cedric Hampton, 38, who's worked the waffle house for four years, Took the kid. For me, it was a no-brainer. Graduation is one of those things you do once in a life. And when you've worked all these years going to school and have that moment, it's necessary to be there. So his employer uh, arranged for him, drove him to high school, got the cap and gown, paid for the whole thing, got him new shoes. And although they couldn't attend the ceremony because of pandemic restrictions, the fellow employees waited in the parking lot to greet the new graduate. 
Oh. I think that's just absolutely wonderful. Yeah. I think that's one of those stories. And this is one of the reasons why I, I like Crooks and Liars, other than the fact I'm married to one of the editors and think she's <laughs> just the, the best thing in the world, is there are all of these wonderful human interest stories mm-hmm. that fly under the radar mm-hmm. about people. And we have this happening in Springfield all the time. We have restaurants who stepped up and gave away literally thousands of meals. Free food. Yep. Free food. All through the pandemic. They, they kept their doors open. And the people who work there love working there because mm-hmm. they're really well. They're making a difference. Yes. They're making a difference. And their boss treats them really well. And and the, the, the community appreciates them. And it's one of those virtuous circles where, oh, we can take care of each other. We really mm-hmm. can. Uh, instead of slapping a sign on the door saying, sorry. You know, we, nobody we, wanted nobody to come to work because they're all getting handouts from the government. Oh, wait, what? here's your handout from the government. Oh, yeah. thanks. But I'll, I'll put this link also <laughs> up on uh, when I post this thing because it, you know, there are things I occasionally bring to your attention, usually involving like a, a mule kissing a guy or <laughs> a duck and a dog, you know, working together to overcome a problem that, that make me smile. And we have discovered that stories that make us happy um, don't take away from our political edge yeah. and don't and occasionally just are necessary to sort of breathe, you know, chop mm-hmm. wood, carry water, laugh at ducks and donkeys. It mm-hmm. should be should be the third part of that. Don't forget to notice all the good people doing all the good things in your community. I, I want you to know out there in in podcast land that Drift Glass has been a stepdad, not just to my kids, but to a lot of kids that have come yeah. through the front door of this house over the course of the past 10 years of marriage. Yeah. To him. And uh, he 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 loves being that minivan dad carting kids around and making sure they're safe and Oh yeah, that's you know, that's the best. I mean, this is what best. when I get cross examined about what I want for Father's Day, I said I got everything. I've got everything I want. I got everything mm-hmm. I ever wanted. I want more of everything. <laughs> um, but that's just you know, that's I got just, a weed whacker this year. Folks. I did. I went out and got myself a weed whacker, blue gal. He went out and bought it himself. I did. This is like this is what we do. Yeah. Get what you want. Go get it. I know my wife wants knitting stuff. Yeah, I know and I just I, order it. So I, I, I will never know enough. <laughs> To order like right. adjectives for a professional lexographer. So, right. And my husband um, is six foot eight and I don't want him to get a weed whacker that requires him to bend over yeah. at a 45 degree angle in yeah. order to use it. So it has to be adjustable so that it's long enough for his arms. Mm-hmm. And uh, you wanted a rechargeable one. I did. And uh, I, I didn't know the one you got, I think, is a little bit heavy for me. It is. But you're six right. foot eight, so you can well, swing it, you know. And you didn't see me out in the backyard because the sound of it covers up me making the zoom, 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 <laughs> lightsaber sound when I cut through things. So, you know, I have a good time uh, at all ends of this transaction. I'm a winner. Um, right. But, you know, don't overlook the little things that make you happy. Yeah. And don't overlook the, the, the people who are doing really good, kind deeds. Uh, in your community and thank them for it. Make sure yeah. you, you call their atten- your attention to it. There's all, if, if I, I would love to do a podcast of just the people I know in Springfield who are doing wonderful things, but then I'd have yeah. to mention their names and then they get tangled up in my politics. And you don't want that. You don't so want that. Thank no. them in private. Hey, let's do a news roundup. The Bidening continues. Yes. The number of confirmed U S deaths from COVID-19 folks uh, has actually surpassed 600,000, 15 months since the onset of the pandemic. The U.S. COVID-19 death toll is more than 200 times higher than the number of lives lost on September 11th and higher than the number of American soldiers killed in combat during Vietnam War, World War I, and World War II combined. However, the U.S. is now averaging 375 deaths per day, which is down from more than 3,000 deaths per day in January and reaching their lowest point since March of 2020, all due to the availability and effectiveness of vaccines. And, the, you know, I grieve for those 375 that died today. Absolutely. I, and you're, you can't take take that as solace for their families. No. So get your shot. <laughs> That's what we're saying. If get anybody's listening shot. to this podcast needs to be reminded to get your shot, we're doing something horribly wrong on this yes, podcast. Yes, that's right. Thanks to the American Rescue Plan, which has lowered premiums and the special enrollment period launched by Joe Biden, more Americans are covered under the Affordable Care Act than at any time since its pa- passage. And it's it's like a lot. 30 million people now have 
health care coverage through the Affordable Care Act in the marketplace. And you have a chance to still do it. Uh, Andy Slavitt, by the way, who, A, has a new book out uh, called Preventable. I want to plug that book because... Do we have a copy of it here? We have a copy of it here. The the, the failure of the Trump administration should not be underreported. But he also, you know, he's Mr. Affordable Care Act. Mm -hmm. And uh, he pointed out that if you are uninsured, Uh, 80% of people that are still uninsured can get coverage on the Affordable Care Act marketplace plan for under $10 a month. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's because of the American Rescue Plan. They have increased the subsidies big time. Mm -hmm. And if you have not checked that out, if you have already have health insurance through the Affordable Care Act, go back on the website and add a phone number, make Report a life change and add a phone number. Of any kind, yep. Of any kind. Just make a little change to your record and check out whether you can get a higher subsidy because subsidies have gone up. And um, I am very grateful that uh, we we worked out our situation with our son who just graduated from college. Mm-hmm. And he had college insurance, which isn't the greatest, but it's insurance. And they had a clinic on campus and it worked for him because he's 18 to 22, yeah. you know, and yeah. they, it, it worked, uh, but now he's going to lose that this summer. And, you know, I go through the whole trial that I've gone through multiple times while recording this podcast of how do I make sure my kid has insurance and has the medications he needs. Mm-hmm. And it, once we figured out what we needed to do in terms of whose whose custody is he going to right. be in with, right. with, with my ex, you know, on paper, yeah, on yeah. paper. And he's going to be mine, son, because he's going to live here and go to graduate school. We signed him up. We signed him up for on the Affordable Care Act to be on my insurance mm-hmm. till he's 26. And that's only four more years, Strickland. I know. I know. <laughs> so, but, oh, great. but let's let's take life in four year blanks. We'll take life one day at a time. And let's remember what, a you know, not remember, but th- that is such a relief. I mean, for yeah. every family, for every family who has one of those terrifying financial things that you, right. you don't have a lot of control over bearing down on you when, yep. when the pressure of that is relieved just incrementally. Yep. It's such a relief. There are so many things that c- can be done simply like, yep. you know, student loan um, forgiveness. Seriously. Things yeah. that we can do right now that doesn't, don't involve scientific breakthroughs yeah. or miracle cures that can, sa- that can save the lives and in- improve the lives of tens of millions of people. Yep. And I really kind of, you know, it's so clear that there is one group of people in this country who want to do that. And mm-hmm. we fight over how it gets done. We fight among the, uh, with the assholes in our midst who are just really just want to be Republicans and are stuck mm-hmm. in our party. Mm-hmm. And the other party that doesn't want to do any of it. That mm-hmm. just wants to make us cry when they stop us from doing it. That's the right. only thing that motivates them. Right. Um, well, we talked about the Supreme Court. So let's move on to the Biden administration who will invest $3.2 billion dollars to advance the development of antiviral pills to treat COVID-19 and other viruses, which I must add will also make it easier to get the microchip into the body. And the magnet. Mm -hmm. And maybe the light, maybe they can put a little light and you can stick the pill up your butt. Yeah. Well, the pill is going to be about the size of a, of a Reese's peanut butter cup. (laughs) So, yeah. So, and it's got to have the magnet and the 5G and the the whole thing, you know, the file backup. (laughs) <laughs> the the end user agreement is like twelve pages long, so that's you know, and and, and I have trouble swallowing that now. So anyway, Biden signed legislation making Juneteenth a federal holiday to commemorate the end of slavery in the United States. The bill unanimously passed by voice vote in the Senate. Fourteen Republicans in the House, <laughs> including Paul Gosar, are you surprised? Oh, God. Yeah, no. Voted against the proposal. Also, uh, Mo Brooks of Alabama. Yeah. All these people that are in those deep, deep red districts where, you know. Mm-hmm. Okay. Where, where the blacks live, blue gal. The blacks. Oh, what about the blacks, Drift Glass? Yeah, I just, I didn't know how to put that into our notes in a way that would smoothly <laughs> well, flow. Let me, but... let me say, because John Amato wrote that up today and I, I edited the piece that uh, there's a new book coming out about Donald Trump that's got him bitching about the blacks, I did so much for the blacks and the blacks don't love me. And I only reason I did it is because Jared kept bugging me to do it. Jared. And I think that's, that is 
that's a whole bunch of things that are horrible and wrong. Layer, there's a layer cake there. Of but stuff going but on. it's also trying to kneecap his son-in-law because his son-in-law's book is going to come out before yeah. his book's going to come out. So, yeah, you know, yeah. we want to just shit on anyone who might. Oh, be- there's, a, there's a whole list on Twitter of um, alternative names for Jared's book. My, yeah. my, mine was money, please. Money, please. Give me the money now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Star Wars kid grows up. I, I don't know. There's there's a lot of stuff that can be done there. Um, the education department, the um, let me spe- uh, specify, the Biden education department mm-hmm. has canceled more than $500 million in federal student loan debt for 18,000 borrowers who were defrauded by the now defunct for-profit ITT Technical Institute. And and watch the space. There's more coming. Yeah. I've been reading some stuff up on that. And it's not that Biden doesn't want to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, the, ed- the Biden, we have to, we do have to insist on that. We, we? really do. Otherwise we're, we're talking about the Betsy DeVos. The Betsy DeVos Education Department yeah. is no more. Is no more. Mm-hmm. The Biden Education Department has issued new guidance that the rights of transgender and gay students are protected at school by Title IX. Mm-hmm. And that that's great because Title IX is established law. You don't have to go through a Senate filibuster. That's right. Um, however, that's merely a reversal of the Trump era guidance that gay and transgender students are not protected by those federal laws. Yeah. And so the, the real anxiety is, well, if this is just the switch that good presidents can turn on and bad presidents can turn off, that means you got to always elect the good presidents. Yes. Yeah. yeah. We have, there's a whole lot of things that can be toggled off and on that need to be toggled on permanently. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Uh, the house voted to repeal the 2002 authorization for use of military force in Iraq. About goddamn time. The mm-hmm. 2002 authorization was repeatedly applied beyond its original intent, despite the Iraq war ending nearly a decade ago. Chuck Schumer said he will also put the uh, authorization to a vote this year. Earlier this week, Biden said he supports repealing the authorization. Guess how Mitch McConnell stands on this issue? He said, he Whatever not su- it is, I'm, I'm against, against it. it. <laughs> he, he will not support the authorization, calling it reckless, the, the repealing of the authorization, because... Mitch McConnell is an evil little troll. The Justice Department has the Biden Justice nah, Department. They're they're semi independent. I I hesitated. I was going to put Biden in there, but I oh, took it out. But you're it's, right. It's the Justice Department, which is not Biden's to run. Exactly. Yeah, because we have a Trump Justice Department that was Trump's Justice Department. Right. Okay. The Justice Department has reversed a Trump era immigration ruling that limited the possibility of asylum protections in the U.S. For women fleeing from domestic violence in other countries Mm -hmm. and some victims of gang violence. Attorney General Merrick Garland vacated the 2008 decision by former Attorney General Jeff Sessions that ordered immigration judges to stop granting asylum to victims of private violence like domestic violence or gangs. Can you imagine? Yeah, well, that's and, you know, Jeff Sessions was the good one. So. (sighs) Um, the Biden House Judiciary Committee, see what I did no, there? No, it's not. No, no. The, the House <laughs> Judiciary Committee and the Department of Justice's Inspector General have both opened investigations into efforts by the Trump Justice Department, because that's what it was, to mm-hmm. seize data from members of Congress, journalists, and then White House counsel. The Senate confirmed Judge Kenche Brown Jackson to the District of Columbia Circuit Court of Appeals in a 53 to 44 vote. Jackson is the first black woman confirmed to an appellate court in a decade mm-hmm. and is one of five black female circuit court judges currently serving. Uh, Joe Biden went to London to visit the queen, and he did. Then he went to NATO, uh, talked to allies who were v- reportedly very happy not to be dealing with a corrupt, narcissistic Russian asset asshole anymore. Um <laughs> Just reportedly, <laughs> reportedly happy that that guy's gone. Uh, then Biden went to Geneva to meet with the Russian, or, uh, with Russian autocrat and Trump 2020 campaign manager Vladimir Putin. Both men described their first in-person summit as constructive and good and positive. Biden spoke to reporters after the meeting for just under four hours, saying that he pressed Putin over alleged hacking, human rights abuses, and more. I did what I came to do, Biden said, adding. The bottom line is I told President Putin that we need to have some basic rules of the road that we can all abide by. Newsmax deconstructed every second of Biden's press conference and was especially horrified that it was held outdoors and that Biden took off his jacket. They also uh, had orgasms over uh, Putin. Yes, they did. As well. 
He is so yeah. manly. Did you see him behind that podium? He's like oh 80 feet God. tall. Oh, he was indoors. He didn't sweat because lizards don't sweat. You the know, Chiron it's... said, Vlad up to the task. Yeah, it really. And, you know, when you are a Russian asset, just yeah. lean into it. Because the people that the people that you're talking to are far too stupid to know or care that that's what you are. And mm-hmm. the people that know that you are, well, you're out to own them anyway. So why not just stick it in their eye? Mm-hmm. Uh, and this is reflected in new polling from The Economist and YouGov, pointing out that President Vladimir Putin polls higher than President Biden among Trump voters. Because he's a white nationalist. He's a white strongman. They love that guy. And he kept bringing up Black Lives Matter and how much he didn't want Black Lives Matter in Russia. What about the patriots who uh, came you know, to the, the capital the re- of The reason States? that I'm killing all of my political enemies is because I don't want Black Lives Matter marches in Russia. Very bad. You know, all the... <laughs> All those patriots you've locked up in American Gulag for protesting government on January 6th. What do you call that, huh? And that's literally what he said. I mean, I'm, yes, that's, that's a direct literally quote, what he said. It is. Yeah. There's a no difference, none, between Russian state propaganda and Fox News reporting anymore no, no, at all. No, no. And Fox News is repeating Russia disinformation and yeah. propaganda. Because it's easier than writing it yourself. Well, and also it brings money into the Lackland's pocket. Right. You know, the Murdochs right. make money when you lie to stupid people. And mm-hmm. so they're, they're cool with that. I think that's the theme of this show. It is. I believe it is. <laughs> According to emails sent between December 2020 and early January. Now, this is after the election. After the election. Mm-hmm. Trump is an, and his aides pressured top Justice Department officials to challenge his election laws to Biden and investigate debunked conspiracy theories and baseless claims of voter fraud and stuff like Italy gate. Cause Italian, you know, those Italian satellites. Well, Italians are known for their mastery of space and, and uh, satellite technology. And those Italian satellites, you know, they can get right into the voting machines. Well, I liked what was the the Georgia satellites. And, but they were, you know, they, they were like five years and then nobody listened to them anymore. Yeah. Italian, the Italian they satellite. They were ahead of their time. Jeff. They were. They were far ahead of their time. After blocking major voting rights legislation for weeks, Senator Joe Manchin finally laid out the, the changes he wanted in a compromise bill. Manchin, who is the only Senate Democrat who is not sponsoring the For the People Act, has opposed the For the People Act, saying it's too partisan and arguing that changes to voting laws should have bipartisan support. And what happened in response? Mitch McConnell gave Manchin the full Obama. He did. McConnell told Manchin to go fuck himself by rejecting Manchin's voting rights compromise offer out of hand. Manchin's stripped down bill focused on expanding early voting, requiring voting uh, voter ID, ending partisan gerrymandering in federal elections, which I'm sure is something Mitch really doesn't want to do. No. Having at least 15 consecutive days of early voting and making Election Day a public holiday. Cra- crazy, crazy yeah. controversial stuff. The, 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 the crackpot liberals, Marxists, I'm sorry, yeah. Marxists want. McConnell's pledge virtually guarantees that Republicans will filibuster the voting bill that Chuck Schumer plans to send to the floor Tuesday. This bill will need 60 votes to proceed over a filibuster. And because Mitch McConnell, you know, it's jab, jab, punch. Mitch McConnell also this week threatened to block any Supreme Court nominee put forward by the Biden administration during the 2024 election if Republicans regain control of the Senate. Yeah, he yeah. promised to do that. Yep. Because so he's stacking the court. Yeah. Let's be clear. He is once again promising to do what he has been doing all along, which is stack the court. He has Any been. effort to expand the Supreme Court is unstacking the court. Well, I've and, said that many times. And, and to sort of bring this all back to the beginning. This Mm -hmm. is because of the deeply held belief. I don't think they believe it, believe it. I think they say it because they need to say it among all Republicans that the Democratic Party is not legitimate, Right. period. The Democrats must not be allowed to govern when they win. They they have to be cheated out of elections. They have to be lied out of elections when they get into office. And they can't accomplish anything when they win. They need to be sabotaged while they're in there. And the reason their voters go along with this is because for 30 years, they've had People shitting into their skull, like Rush Limbaugh, Sean Hannity, Bill O'Reilly, Glenn Beck. Newt Gingrich. Newt Gingrich, uh, Charlie Sykes. Mm -hmm. Um, And they built a base for who also agree that Democrats are illegitimate, which is why a fraction of that base was willing to storm the nation's capital to Mm -hmm. prevent a free election uh, because it risked having Democrats being legitimately conferred into power. Right. And that cannot even be allowed to happen. Even when the Democrat is Joe Biden. Yeah, even when the Democrat is I'm, I'm, I'm not shitting on our president, 
Believe no. me, I'm not. No. But I'm saying that of, of all the deeply offensive Democrats that could make life difficult for re- the Republican Party, mm-hmm. you got Joe Biden. You got Joe Biden. Well, as, a but white how, old guy. How long? How long did it take them to turn Joe Biden into an AOC puppet Marxist? Right. Right. It's not sticking. It's not working. But it doesn't need to work to the outside world because they don't care about the outside world. They care I don't wanna, about their I don't want to. I don't want to end this podcast without talking for a second about Stacey Abrams. Oh, please, please, please. Go ahead. Because she inserted herself into this in a very positive way yeah. and said she could work with Joe Manchin because mm-hmm. she's got her eyes on the prize. <laughs> she wants people to be able to vote. She doesn't want a political win. She wants people to be able to vote. And she said, and and I gave her props for this. She said, look, I'm not against voter ID. I'm against voter ID being used to prevent people from voting. Yes. Yeah. And I pointed out on Twitter that in Illinois, if you provide the secretary of state with your driver's license number, which is voter ID, Mm -hmm. you can register for vote by mail online. You go on your computer, you enter your driver's license number, they check it against the DMV records, and then you are registered to get your ballot by mail. And that's not, that is voter ID. You're, you're surrendering your ID in order to get your ballot. Well, and, and but it's not preventing someone from voting. It's actually helping you get a ballot and be able to vote from home. And as you and I and uh, Junior Dude talked about yesterday, mm-hmm. there's a model for this. It's called mm-hmm. vaccine distribution. Yes, right. We, we have drive up vaccinations. We have drive by vaccinations. Mm-hmm. We have tents set up. We have mm-hmm. we have clothing stores. We have bars. Every drugstore in America is is a vaccine distribution point. And we're doing it at the state fair. We're bribing people to go get vaccinated. Mm-hmm. If you can put together a national strategy of getting people who are vaccine hesitant even, or, or just way far away from any central civilized location, way right. in the country. If you can 10 get- miles from a Walgreens, which right. I just can't imagine anyone is, but they are. Yes. Well, okay. We'll pay for an Uber. You know, mm-hmm. we're yeah. going to get a driver there. If, if you can mount that kind of campaign on a national level to get people shot, you can do that for voter ID. Right. And for, the only for reason voter you, ID and for and for voter registration. And for voter registration. Yeah. Absolutely. There's no we we have the model. COVID has literally handed us the model for doing this. The only reason not to do this is because the Republican Party is a white nationalist um um fascist party. Fascist party mm-hmm. who believes in preventing people of color from voting because then they'll lose elections. And Democrats from voting because yeah. Democrats are always illegitimate as leaders. Yes. 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 Yeah. Um, and speaking of that, Driftless, of the of the bribing people to get their hey. vaccine uh-huh. in local news. Yeah. Best governor in the country, J.B. Pritzker, has uh, used some of the um, COVID relief money, which, as I had to point out to about eight people on Twitter today who are <laughs> replying to J.B. Pritzker on Twitter because they have all day to do that. Um, this is grant money given to the state of Illinois mm-hmm. by the federal government. For the purpose of combating COVID-19, they cannot spend it on anything else but battling COVID-19. So we're, we have a lottery now. We have a lottery for vaccinated people. They're giving away college uh, scholarships, full ride uh, at any publicly owned college in the state of Illinois mm-hmm. for people under 18. And people over 18 can win anywhere from $100,000 to a $1 million if you've had at least one shot. Oh, sure. You liberals will, will, will let people be bribed into getting vaccinated, but you won't let me set up a private prison with some of that good, good money. <laughs> you bastards. A private for-profit a prison private that will for- be managed by yeah. hedge fund managers yeah. who get paid either way. Yeah. If the prison is empty, we still get paid by the taxpayers of I'm starting, Alabama. I'm starting to I think- I can't that, get over that. I'm starting to think that COVID-19 wasn't the worst plague that's been visited on this country. <laughs> Hedge fund managers is pretty bad. Yeah, it's and, and there's really no cure for them. Um, no, no, no. Each week we post to our Facebook page and website an internet kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's internet kitty is a crotchety old lady dog named Daisy. Daisy, I love her. She is mm-hmm. my spirit animal because mm-hmm. she's 13. She doesn't want you to bother her because she's taking a nap on the big bed. <laughs> and I got to say, she's. She's a small dog, but she's feisty. And don't bother her while she's taking a nap. It's hot out. And of course, Daisy Eats Freshly Poured Dog Food, our fake sponsor. Whether you serve pet store perfection or dollar store dreck, your pets will sit on the kitchen floor and demand. 
that the food they eat is only freshly poured. Freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh my Lord, it's freshly poured. And you can visit Daisy at our Facebook page or website. She's taking a nap in this picture. <laughs> Pretty tired. <laughs> she's tired. I'm tired. The people are exhausting. She's 13 and she's kind of had it. You know, she's not mm -hmm. interested in waiting on anybody right now. <laughs> and you can send your internet kitty dog or other pet to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. We got the first two raspberries from our front yard little we garden. We did. Middle child planted, it was a mistake, but it was a happy mistake. She planted mm -hmm. raspberry bushes in the front and they just spread. Yes. Yeah. There's uh -huh. no way, no controlling them. It's just wild out there now. But um, the, it tastes like summer. It does. You know. It really does. So let us know what's growing in your garden. If you're a gardener, let us write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write to us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions! Letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Hashtag fire to joy. It's always a good day to fire to joy. It really is. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an iced coffee for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job. And it's a labor of love. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Our PayPal postal address information, all of it is there at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on social media, and thank you so much for doing that. Hey, Drift Glass. Hey, Drift Glass. How are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Well, look, Al, the Internet Kitties demand to know why there are dog days of summer, but there are no cat days of winter or spring or fall. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, lovey dovey. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional F Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2021 DGBG Productions.